Revelation chapter number 20. Begin reading in verse number 10. I preached out of this passage a lot over the years, but this week God began to stir my heart. I'm glad God knows what we need. Verse number 10, the Bible says, And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Let me just say, Hallelujah. Verse 11 says, And I saw a great white throne. And can I say this is one of the most horrifying passages you'll find in the Bible. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open. And another book was open, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Let's pray. Our Father, we sure do want to bless your name. Lord, you truly are all that we need. And God, we're thankful for that day that you drew me to salvation some 47 years ago. Lord, we are thankful for the truths of the Scriptures. We're thankful that the very Word of God contains the words of life. Lord, we're glad that you are the way, the truth, and the life. We're glad you came to give us life and life more abundantly. But Lord, as we are here this morning, we fear there may be some who are still dead in trespasses and sins. Lord, if they do not give their heart and life to Jesus, if they do not, Lord, repent and trust in you as Lord and Savior, what we just read will be reality to them someday. God, we don't want to see that happen, nor do you. You said it's your will that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So, Father, I pray for the next few minutes you'd put a hedge about this place. I pray you'd bind the powers of hell. Satan hates what we're preaching on today. He's already trying to distract in the service. So, God, I pray you'd bind him... And I pray the sweet Holy Ghost of God would be allowed to do His office work around here. I pray you to rest hearts, rest our attention. And I pray today Jesus would be magnified and glorified. And I pray that hell would be horrified. I pray, Father, that we would see the saints of God revived just at the remembrance of what they've escaped. And then, Father, we pray... For those that may be in the sanctuary this morning or even those that are watching via live stream, the Holy Ghost of God through cords of love would begin to convict them of their sin and draw them to an altar of repentance. Now, Father, I pray you'd use this unworthy vessel. Father, I have nothing to offer but tattered garments. So, Father, I pray that you would do for us what we cannot do for ourselves. And God, I pray you'd be highly exalted. Use this unworthy vessel and glorify your namesake. We'll thank you for it. Thank you for the good singing. Thank you for the good Sunday school hour. And thank you for being a good God. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen and amen. In this portion of Scripture, we see the damned. Look in verse number 12, the Bible says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. You say, what are those books? Those are the books that will record every sin that every person has ever committed who has never been saved by the good grace of God. What a wonderful thought that when you got saved, your sins were blotted out. 
your past sins, your present sins, your future sins, never to be remembered anymore. What a blessing to know uh, when the Lord looks at me, he sees himself, huh? But if you're here today and you're not saved, your sins are being recorded. And one day, everyone will be revealed. He goes on to say, and uh, another book was opened. What is that? That's the Lamb's book of life. That book records all the names of those who have, been, who have trusted Christ, who have repented of their sins, been born again. It said, uh, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. This is the crowd that is damned. Brother Phil, it's not looking for how much money they gave to churches. Brother James, it's not looking for how many years they went without missing a Sunday school. Uh, can I say it's not uh, looking for how uh, 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 many folks were baptized or how many folks uh, uh, were on a church roll. Uh, uh, it's looking for the blood of Christ. Uh, and if the blood of Christ has not been applied, those that are there at the great, well, great white throne judgment are damned. Can I say that it mentioned that heaven and earth was fled away. They are standing on nothing, Brother Bob, except the power of God. You won't have an argument to stand on, friend. See, where you spend eternity is based on what you do with Christ in this life. We see the damned. Notice, if you will, their destination. Look at verse 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Their destination is a place worse than hell. It is the place called the lake of fire. It is a place that is an engulfed lake of fire. And the fire never goes out. Can I say, one writer said, if you're born once, you'll die twice. So that's the second death. But if you've been born twice, you only die once. I'm glad I got born again. Hallelujah. But then I want you to notice the deceiver in verse number 10. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. We see that there's a deceiver mentioned here, the devil, Satan, the sorry no good snake. Jesus had a little bit to say about the deceiver in John eight forty four. He said, Ye are of, of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Can I say something about the devil? He's devious. Can I say something about him? He's defrauding. Can I say this about the devil? He's disruptive. The devil is no respecter of persons. He hates everybody. And he wants to damn everybody that he can to the lake of fire where he's going to be. Now, as disruptive and devious and damning as he is, he's also very subtle. He wants you to believe that he's walking around in a red suit with horns and a pitchfork. Yet the Bible says he can be transformed into an angel of light. He's very subtle. Can I say something else? He's very seductive. He knows exactly what carrot to dangle in front of you to get you to follow him. Mm -mm. Can I say he's also uh, very subversive? He wants to control you. He wants to manipulate you. He'll put thoughts in your mind uh, and put things in your path uh, that will take you away from truth uh, and will follow his lies all the way to the lake of fire. I fear as we sit here today, Brother Bob, there are some people whose lives 
are controlled by the lies of the devil. You say, how slick is he? Well, he tainted Eve. Just changed the Word of God just a little bit. Enough to get her to take of the fruit. And Adam also. And their sin's been passed all the way down to us. He's slick enough that he tempted Christ in the wilderness. Now, one audacity that the very one who knows who the Master is, the King of glory, and yet he didn't even fret at tempting the Lord Jesus Christ. He tainted Eve, he tempted Christ, uh, but he's trapped countless. Many while sitting on a church pew. I'm going to preach on this deception of this deceiver for a minute this morning. I want to preach on smoke screens from hell. Lies born in the pits of hell that people are clinging to that's going to drag them off to the lake of fire. Things that even while people sit in churches, the devil put in their mind uh, uh, to ignore the preaching, to ignore the Word of God, uh, uh, to live their life uh, uh, after the philosophy of Satan. If it feels good, do it. Uh, Satan's philosophy is my right to my claim to myself. Uh, I'll do what I want when I want, and everybody else, can. it don't matter if they like it or not. Hmm? Friend, that philosophy will take you off to the lake of fire. And can I say this, and I dare say it, it'll take you there quicker than you thought. Mm. I look at my, people my age that have lived a life of debauchery, and they look 40 years older than me. The scars of sin hanging off of them. Brother Bob, they are so steeped in sin, they wouldn't begin to see the light if they knew how to. And some of you are headed down that path. Amen. The devil has used smoke screens to damn people for generations. Smoke screens like this. When I die, I'll party with my friends in hell. Mm -mm. Well, listen to what the Bible says. Matthew 13 says this, verse 49, So shall it be at the end of the world, the angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. Verse 50, listen. And shall cast them into the furnace of fire, there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Doesn't sound like a party to me. Sounds like a place uh, uh, of torment, a place uh, where there's nothing but wailing. Uh, uh, it goes beyond crying. Uh, it goes beyond sobbing. Uh, wailing is born from a heart of pain and affliction. Uh, and it's that gnashing of teeth uh, where the suffering is so severe uh, that people gnash on their own bodies trying to dull the pain. Uh, and they do it to no avail. The smoke screen from hell, there is no party going on in hell. Only agony and suffering. Uh, and I say this, there is the torture of the suffering of hell, but the worst torture is the memory is not erased. Everybody that goes to hell remembers every time they heard the name Jesus Christ. They remember every time somebody invited them to church. Uh, they remember every church service they've ever sat in. Uh, they remember every word of every message they ever heard. Uh, I dare say if you leave here today lost, you won't remember every word I said now. Uh, but if you die and go to hell, you will, friend. Uh, you'll remember every opportunity Jesus Christ tried to redeem you, uh, and you rejected Him. For all of eternity, you'll remember Brother Phil, there are things in our lives we regret and we'd go back and erase if we could. Amen. They sometimes haunt us. In hell, they will haunt you. Every opportunity you could have been saved. Every time you drove by church. Every time the thought of being saved entered your mind and you said no. You'll remember, there's no party going on in hell. Only agony. 
Can I say this? The devil has smoke screens. He spews venomous lies, some of which you've believed. Another one of his lies is the pain in hell is not that bad. Well, let's listen to somebody who's there. In Luke chapter 16, verse 23, the Bible says, In hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, uh, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Uh, and he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, uh, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water, uh, and cool my uh, uh, tongue, for I'm tormented in this flame. Uh, 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 he goes on to say in verse 28, For I have five brethren, uh, that he may testify in them, lest they also come into this place of torment the rich man in hell's in torment and it's so bad brother James he said send somebody tell my brothers not to come here there ain't no party going on in hell it's a place of torment all oh, the pain's not that bad that's not what he says he said that it's so bad that just one drop of water would cool his tongue there is no hope in hell it's a place of torment torture can I say the very scent of hell if you look at verse 10 it says the lake of fire and brimstone brimstone is the smell of rotten eggs it is so intense and so uh, 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 horrible, the very scent or whiff of it uh, will cause you to regurgitate. Uh, uh, but can I say, Brother Phil, uh, in the lake of fire, uh, in that intense smell, uh, in that intense gagging smell, uh, it is so bad you can't even regurgitate uh, because the fluid would cool your tongue. It's a place of torment and torture. So the pain's not that bad. This is how bad it is. The hell was created for the devil and his angels. Supernatural beings. Those that uh, uh, were cast out of heaven because of their pride and their revolt. And God made a place where they would be afflicted uh, forever. And if it afflicts supernatural beings, how much worse on the soul of man. It's a smoke screen for me. All oh, the pain's not that bad. You've been watching Hollywood too much. Another smoke screen from the devil, from the pits of hell, is that you have plenty of time for you have to worry about eternity. Mm -mm. Well, again, listen to the Bible. There's a rich man in the Bible. He says. Uh, I've, I've got so much, I'm going to tear down my barns and build bigger. Now listen to what God said to him. Luke 12, 20, But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Fred, you don't have a promise of tomorrow. All you got's right now. If we used to go to a graveyard today, you'd see children buried there. You'd see teenagers buried there. You'd see young adults buried there. You'd see middle-aged people there. You'd see old people. There's people from every generation buried there. From the moment you took your first breath, death got on your trail. You don't know how long you have. The Bible says this, though, in 2 Corinthians 6, 2, For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation I have secured thee. The, behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. You don't have a promise of tomorrow, but you got right now. If you're not saved, I'd run to an altar and get saved today because the lake of fire is waiting on you. i got plenty of time. A couple of weeks ago, I had the privilege of preaching down at Faith Baptist Church in Shelby. Crossroads Rescue was down there having their annual jubilee. They told the story one morning. Brother Rocky told the story how a young man had come to the mission. He didn't like all the rules. He didn't like have to hear preaching all the time. So he decided he's going to leave. He only stayed about three weeks and left, Miss Melissa. He left, and, but he didn't leave Shelby. He was living in a homeless camp in Shelby. Well, some of the men from the mission, when they was out... Uh, 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 collecting stuff for the thrift store. They saw him. They pulled over and they tried all everything in their power, Brother Mike, to encourage him to come back to the mission. Come back and get some help. He told him, said, well, maybe I will. That night, 
he stepped out in front of a car. The car hit him and he died. And he died and he went to hell. Friend, you don't know how much time you got, but even more important than that, you don't know if God will ever deal with you ever again. You got right now. You better trust Christ. This might be your final warning. God may have gave me this message just for you because hell's got your name on it. And Jesus says, I don't want you to die and go to hell. There's so many smoke screens from the devil. So many lies he's told. He tells people, your past cannot be overcome. You've done too much. You've seen too much. Jesus won't forgive you of that. But again, let me tell you what the Bible says. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Amen. Hallelujah. The night I got saved, my past was gone. Yeah. Uh, and friend, you see people in here wearing neckties and suit coats and nice dresses. Uh, you think I could never be like them, but you don't know where they came from. Uh, you don't know what garbage dump God found them. Uh, you don't know how low they were stooped in sin. Uh, they were in horrible pits, uh, but God came by their way and reached way down uh, and pulled them out, uh, put them on a rock, uh, put praise unto God in their lips, uh, changed their lives. Uh, I'm glad in Christ uh, our past is gone hallelujah the devil tell you God can't save you hogwash God's God the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin uh, Jesus died was buried and rose again for one purpose uh, to save sinners uh, and friend he'll save you hmm. Isaiah 1 18 says come now let us reason together saith the Lord Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Uh, though they be red as crimson, they shall be as wool. I'm here to tell you, Jesus Christ can save you and cleanse you from all wickedness, friend. You just got to be willing to turn and ask Him to save you. Hmm? The devil's slick. He lies. He's lying to some of you right now. Some of you right now, the devil's whispering in your ear. Don't believe what that preacher says. You got plenty of time. Don't believe what that preacher says. They'll never ever uh, uh, accept you. That's another one of his lies. You will never be accepted. Hmm? People will not accept you. Yet Ephesians one six says, "To the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in the beloved." You see, when God saves and forgives you and His grace is imputed unto you, my dear friends, uh, you're one of His. Uh, and guess what? You become accepted amongst His people. huh? Mm. We're that mutt crowd. You know that, don't you? You ever watch them dog shows on, t on TV and they got all these dogs? You know them dogs never walk on pavement. They never go outside in the rain. You know, you see these dogs, man. I, I mean, you know, they're... They're, they're treated like I don't know what. I know my dog isn't treated that way. All these purebreds, all these champion bloodlines, all these dogs think they're better. Yeah, that's not us. We were the mutts. Uh, I heard a preacher one time tell about his grandpa. He used to always bring these old mangy dogs home. He'd go out by the railroad tracks and find these old mangy dogs, put a rope on him, bring him home. It was a nasty looking thing. He said, Grandpa would tie him up out behind the house, old mangy-looking mud of a dog. He said he'd take some motor oil, start putting it on his coat, uh, get all that mange off of it. Uh, started feeding him a little bit. Uh, go out there and put some food, water in front of that dog. And not just uh, any food, give him good table scraps. Uh, and that dog got to eating. And all of a sudden, that old scrawny dog that you saw nothing but his ribs started fattening up. Uh, and that old mangy coat, that oil uh, started cleaning him up. Uh, before long, that tail went up. Uh, got the wagon. Uh, he was glad to be a dog again. Uh, hey, we were nothing but old mangy mutts. Uh, but God came by our way. Uh, hey, through the oil of the Holy Ghost, uh, started working in our lives, uh, started feeding us the Word of God. Uh, hey, I'm just glad I'm a dog that the Savior found one day. Hallelujah. Uh, what worth shooting? 
but he saw something in me that he loved. Uh, I've got news for you, friend. If Jesus accepts you, it really don't matter what people think, but I've got good news for you. God's people will accept you too. Uh, he said if any come to him, he know why he's cast them out. Uh, talking about smoke screens from hell. Uh, another lie the devil has used to damn people to hell. He tells people, you get a pass. You're good enough. You don't need what that religion, what them preachers say. You're good enough yourself. You're a good moral person. Uh, you don't hurt anybody. You're just good enough as you are. Hmm? Well, it all sounds good when you're lost. You think people going to hell, you think about people that are murderers. You think about people that are thieves and whoremongers and all that wicked stuff. But yet the Bible says this. Romans 3.10 says, As is written, there's none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23 says, For all sin comes short of the glory of God. You see, we all had the same problem. We were conceived in sin. We were born as sinners. We sin by nature. We sin by practice. Sin became natural to us. We liked sin. We liked all the things of sin. There's just one problem. Whatever gives you a high today, you'll need something stronger tomorrow. Whatever gives you a thrill today won't do it tomorrow. You need something new. And one day all the newness is going to wear off of all of it, and all you are is just a miserable, rotten sinner. The reason Jesus had to die, God bankrupt heaven had to give his best. He had to give a righteous one for the unrighteous. He had to give one that wasn't a sinner for sinners. Jesus paid your sin debt, friend, because you could never be good enough to earn God's favor. You're not good enough. There's none that doeth good. No, not one. You're not good enough. Oh, you might be as good as somebody sitting in here today, but you're not good enough to go to heaven. But you are good enough to go to the lake of fire. You do get a pass. You don't have to get saved. You get a pass, you get free pass to hell. Jesus came so you didn't have to go to hell. Jesus gave me this message because he knew you'd be here because he don't want you to go to hell. Let me say this. Another lie the devil tells people is one day the fire in hell will be put out. Yet the Bible says this in Mark 9, verse 43. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life main than to having two hands to go into hell into the fire that never shall be quenched. Verse 44. Where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. The devil tell you hell might be burnt out one day. Your friends may tell you hell, the fire in hell won't last forever. But Jesus said it does. That it is not quenched. For us that are saved, this is as close to hell as we'll ever get. I say hallelujah to the Lamb of God. If you're here today and you're not saved, this is the best your life will ever be. I'm miserable. You don't want to die and go to hell. It would be worse. Charles Haddon, Haddon Spurgeon wrote this years ago, about 100 years ago, actually. He wrote something called Hell Lasts Forever. It says, In hell there is no hope. They have not even the hope of dying, the hope of being annihilated. They are forever, forever, forever lost. On every chain in hell is written forever. In the fire there blazes out the words forever. Up above their heads they read forever. Their eyes are galled and their hearts are pained with the thought that it is forever. 
Oh, if I could tell you tonight that hell would one day be burned out and those that were, who were lost might be saved, uh, there would be a jubilee in hell at the very thought of it. But it cannot be. It is forever. They are cast into outer darkness. Friend, the devil's a liar. Tell you everything you want to hear to keep you from getting born again. But Jesus Christ came full of truth and grace. And he commissioned his church to tell you the truth. The truth is, you're a sinner. But Jesus loves you. Jesus died for you, was buried, and rose again according to the scripture. That you might have the opportunity to be born again. Be saved from your sins. To not have to die and go to hell, but to die and go back to where it was supposed to all been anyway. The fellowship and the abode of God. Right. Adam and Eve walked with God in the cool of the day until they sinned. And God wants to restore that. And take those that believe on Him to glory where we'll be with God forevermore. Friend, you don't have to die and go to hell. You can be born again today. Friend, I don't know what tomorrow holds near to you. But I do know this thing's winding down. Jesus is coming for his church soon. You better get born again. You say, well, I'll wait till next week. That's another lie of the devil. He just wants you to keep putting it off and putting it off, putting it off till you die and go to hell. So well, I don't believe everything you say. Well, I didn't believe everything the preacher said either till I got saved. See, your argument's not with me. You're arguing with the Holy Ghost who's trying to redeem you. He's trying to draw you to an altar of repentance. He is, he is revealing to you you're not right with God. And you don't like it. You won't like it till you get right with God. I'll be thankful he's dealing with you. The devil's lying to some of you right now. And you're okay. You've got plenty of time. Just put it off. Who would you rather listen to? The devil? Or the God of glory who died for you? Who tells you, you don't have to die and go to hell. You can be saved today. He said, all ye that labor and heavy laden, he said, come unto me and I'll give you rest. He'll change your life today. He'll remove all that fear, all that anxiety that, I don't want to die and go to hell. Well, I don't have to worry about that anymore because I got born again. The Lord will remove all that and replace it with wonderful things like love, joy, peace, goodness, gentleness. The Lord wants to change your life. Don't believe the lies of the devil. Put your faith in the Lord. The Bible said, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be saved today. He said, Preacher, I don't know how to be saved. In a minute, we're going to have an invitation. We invite you to come. You come. We'll get somebody to take a Bible. They'll show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. You can get this matter settled today, and you don't have to worry about the lake of fire. I've been hearing some things about these vaccinations people are taking. You know, some of them take them, and you put a magnet on them, and it sticks. What are they putting in people? It's all headed to the mark of the beast and antichrist. This thing's winding down, friend. You say, are you fretting over that? No, I'm going to glory. Uh -uh. Are you? You can have that assurance today. Don't let this message fall on deaf ears. Give Jesus your heart today. You've been hanging out with it for a while and it ain't doing you any good. Why don't you give to Jesus? Let him change your life. Be the best day of your life. People all over this building stand to testify Jesus is the best thing that ever happened to them. And I got good news. He's no respecter of persons. What he's done for them, he'll do for you. If you're willing to come and put your faith in him. Will you trust him today? Will you turn to the Lord today? If you'll come. It'll change your life. Hey, Christian friend, if you know somebody that's lost, they're believing the lies of the devil, you ought to get in this altar and pray, God, open their eyes to truth. I wonder today.
will we do business with God. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. If you're here today and you're not saved, won't you come? Give your heart and life to Jesus. Folks are already coming. Will you come this morning? Will you give your, will your, will your heart to the Lord? Say, Preacher, I, I'm so afraid. I know. But if you'll take that first step, He'll help you take the rest. Will you come? Folks are coming. Will you come? While they're getting a song ready, let's pray. Father, Lord, I know my best is far short of being adequate. But I've tried to do my best to warn people not to listen to the devil. Lord, I fear in my heart there's people here today that have believed his lies. Some may be, be believing the lies of religion. Some may believe the lies of prosperity. I don't know. God, all I know is the lake of fire is belching out and expanding and enlarging every day and people dying and headed that direction. Now, Father, I pray anybody under the sound of my voice isn't saved, the sweet Holy Ghost of God Oh, would draw them through conviction. God, these in the altar praying for friends and loved ones, I pray you'd open their loved ones and friends' eyes to truth. God, do an eternal work around here this morning. God, save that one nearest hell. We'll not fail to bow these unworthy heads and bless you and praise you for what you do. Speak to hearts now, Lord, for it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.